G'day everyone. Welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Today I'm talking one of my favorite native animals. It's the spotted tail quoll or tiger quoll, otherwise known as the baby-faced assassin. The tiger quolls live in Eastern Australia. Uh, they're already under threat, but very recently, the catastrophic fire season of 2019-20 has really burnt through so much tiger or spotted tail quoll habitat. Now, there are four species of quoll native to Australia. Now, I want you to tell me what they are later in the homework, so I'm not gonna say them, but they are all facing extinction. They're all either threatened, vulnerable, or endangered. And what they have in common with each other is that they're facing similar threats. And for some of the smaller quolls, it's really the ferals, like the feral fox and the feral cat that are out competing them. Uh, for a spotted tail quoll, it's an issue of the fox and cat, but also the destruction of its habitat, uh, catastrophic fires, habitat fragmentation, and other threatening processes. I mentioned before that spotted tail quolls are known as the baby-faced assassin. Uh, the reason for that is because, have a look at their face. They're rather cute but they're deadly, they're great predators. And let's have a look at the physical features. Now, quolls are dasyurids. That means they're carnivorous marsupials. So they have a pouch. So females have a pouch that they rear their young in. But when we start with the features, and let's go to the head. Like a Tasmanian devil, which is a very close relative, it too is a dasyurid. They have a really muscular head, so look at that. The head is so big compared to the body, and it's got an enormous skull, but lots of muscle around that skull with a really strong jaw. They are active hunters. Now, the eyesight, not too bad. It's not the best vision, it's not the worst. A great sense of hearing, an incredible sense of smell. Look at that wet nose. Long whiskers to be able to feel their way around in the dark. And when we have a look at the body, it's fawn or brown with white spots. Now, that's called disruptive camouflage. So to us, it doesn't look that camouflage. It looks quite pretty, but you think it's a nocturnal hunter. Okay, so it sleeps through the day in a hollow log, somewhere like that, and it's a nocturnal hunter. Now at night, when it's dark, and there's moonlight and there's shadows, those white dots really blend it into the background, and they become a part of the background. And aside from its brown coat, it's disrupted with white dots, and that's disruptive camouflage. Now it has a long tail that's used for counterbalance. It can sit up, sort of rest on its tail, or when it's climbing around or through trees, tail axes counterbalance. Its little front hands are quite dexterous, so it can grab onto food, hold it, brush dirt off it, and eat. Uh, the back feet, quite interesting. They're quite elongated, not like a kangaroo. They've got their little toes, but they're just used for walking, nothing else. A spotted tail quolls range from North Queensland up near Cairns all the way down to Tasmania. Now in Tasmania is probably where they're doing best and guess what the feral fox isn't found in Tasmania it never got there and that might be one of the reasons why the spotted tail quoll is doing better but between Victoria New South Wales and Queensland spotted tail quolls are on a radical decline. Now much of their habitat is where we humans like to live that's a real problem for them because they get displaced. We put highways and houses and suburbs and shopping centers and quolls cannot live with that. Their habitat is mostly along the Great Dividing Range and they love those eucalypt forests. Spotted tail quolls are known as solitary. Now, sometimes you'll have a male and a female when they're mating or you'll have a mum with her young, but otherwise they spend their lives solitary. Spotted tail quolls are active predators. Uh, they will scavenge and eat carrion or prey that has already died if the opportunity presents, but they are really capable predators. And when you go back a couple of hundred years in Australia, we didn't have cats or fox or even 5,000 years ago, we didn't have dingoes. Spotted tail quolls were the third largest predator in Australia. We had the Tasmanian tiger, and then the Tasmanian devil, and then the spot tail quoll. Now they use their really strong muscular jaw, sharp teeth for grabbing onto prey. Now I've seen spotted tail quolls climb up a tree into a hollow and grab a, a yellow belly glider. That's one of our larger gliders. Grab it, rip it out, take it and store it somewhere. But they will actively hunt anything that they can take down. Now something like a wombat is too big, but maybe a wallaby, 
a wallaby could probably still get away from them unless it was sick or injured, and then it's prey for the quoll. But they'll eat anything from a frog, gecko, baby bird, small mammal. They're a really versatile predator. Tiger quolls are facing extinction, certainly on mainland now. And through various areas, their populations fluctuate. But the common trend is that all populations are declining and their threats are quite broad. So the introduction of the feral fox and the feral cat is a real problem. Beyond that, we've got habitat destruction, habitat fragmentation. Uh, we've simply got areas, I mean, so much of the spotted tail quoll's habitat is now gone. Similar to koalas. I mean, koalas have lost nearly 90% of their habitat that they had before Europeans arrived in Australia. So with all those compounding effects and throw on top catastrophic fires that largely burnt tiger quoll habitat, all of those compound to leave us with the situation that we have an endangered species. Two bits of homework for today. I mentioned earlier there are four species of quoll in Australia. I'd like you to tell me, put it in the comments, what are the four species, what are their names, and where are they found? And next, I'd like you to look up disruptive camouflage. I'll give you another example. Zebras in Africa. They're black and white. We look at them and they stand out, don't they? But do you know that lions are colorblind? So when they look at zebras, they see a herd of zebra and they can't pick one from the other because it's all disrupted by the black and white stripes. That's disruptive camouflage as well. And remember, spotted tail quolls use it in the moonlit shadows. That fawn brown body is broken up by the white dots. There's two examples. Find me another one. Tell me another example of disruptive camouflage. See you later, over and out for today. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. Uh, this is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.